Welcome to the Newbie Real Estate Investor Podcast. I'm Jonathan Boyle with my co-host, Joey Chan. And today we have special guest, Ryan. I don't want to butcher your last name. <laughs> Polakitis. That's why most people just say Ryan Powell. That's why my okay. website. Yeah, I, I, I chose ryanpowell.com because ryanpolakitis.com, no one would find it. So, <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure that they'll misspell it or something. I, I was wondering why your email, it said Ryan Powell. I was, I was like, oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, that was a decision many years back. Tell us a little bit about yourself and I guess your backstory on how you got started in real estate. Sounds good. I basically had a computer background, but I shouldn't say I didn't have a computer background. I, when I went to college at 18, I knew nothing about computers. Still then loved them, you know, graduated, worked for a company called Netophone, voice over IP stuff, which basically they were the pioneers. So when you're making a phone call over the internet, that's, they again, they were like the creators of that. So I did that for five years and I, and I, you know, love technology, still love computers. I don't want to say it wasn't fulfilling, but as most of you guys know, that entrepreneurship, that kind of itch, you know, to, you know, be your own boss, do what you want to do when you want to do it is something that always appealed to me. One of my coworkers, probably after four years of being there, you know, give or take, he, he gives me an audio book. That audio book happened to be Rich Dad Poor Dad. So while we're doing what's called monkey testing, where you're basically like, okay, star six, nine, did that do, you know, what it was supposed to do? And, uh, you know, star one, two, two, whatever it may be, just going through the, the testing that, you know, that they said that, that anyone could do it. So, you know, it didn't take a lot of brain power. So I'm listening to this audio book and it's a three-ish, three and a half hour audio book. And a lot of the concepts go against what we're taught, you know, uh, Absolutely. typical. So, you know, your immediate reaction is to kind of fight those concepts and whatnot. So I guess after a little bit, I kind of, you know, started to kind of, they planted some seeds and then those seeds kind of grow. And then Rich Dad, they had a forum back in the day. And so I just started looking at it and I see a lot of them are talking about real estate and I'm looking and I'm seeing them talk about deals and this and that. And I'm like, wow, it's actually not a pie in the sky. This is doable, right? So seven months into, I'm sorry, shortly after listening to this, I started door knocking. And so if you consider like, you know, the day where I just, all right, let's give it a shot. It was about seven months of really not knowing too much, but actually jumping into the lion's den, door knocking pre foreclosures. Uh, one of the homeowners and says, yeah, you know, invite me in. And I was like, oh shit. Cause I'm like, I'm a little worried. You know, I would, I never got this step. I'm like, okay. <laughs> now, people don't understand like how little I knew. I kid you not. I remember being in the downstairs basement and she showed me the water heater, the, you know, and I, it, it'll look one to me. I didn't know what was what. I mean, that sounds really bad. It was that bad. I knew nothing about. So here she had, you know, taking me through the house and I'm just taking it all in. It happened to be in my local neighborhood where I live now. First house I ever bought. So that was a story in and of itself, but picked up the house. I didn't end up flipping it. I ended up moving into it because I was paying money at my parents' house, you know, nominal rent, $50 a month. And they're like, listen, you know, it's a good opportunity good area, you know, we'll help you out. You know, well, my dad will partner, you know, partner with me. And he's like, you know, get some roommates so that could offset the cost. And hey, you could basically live there for what you're paying here. And who wouldn't want to at 26 have their own house and be in an area that, um, you know, is a relatively nice area. So worked on that house for, I don't know, not whatever it may be. And life happened. So even though I was kind of doing a little bit of work and learning, um, I kind of fell a little bit away from the real estate. And then so I was Still, you know, for the next two years, you know, I maybe dabbled a little here and there. And then it just, I, I basically, hey, this is possible. And that itch just kind of came back. Like, you know, I, it is possible. So why not make that next step? And it was a good timing because the company was starting to do some layoffs. And what I did was I went above my boss's head. I went to the boss's boss and basically just had a conversation, you know, about the severance packages that they're giving. And hey, from, from, a, from a company standpoint, would they rather lay off somebody that's, you know, dependent and has a family and, and now they're not going to be able to provide for their kids or, hey, I'm a single young guy who's just saying, hey, this might be an opportunity. As much as I love it here, this might be an opportunity for me to pursue my venture, my dreams. And he understood that. He knew, you know, he's dabbling maybe real estate himself. So really it was a great scenario. And then, you know, here I am, I get a severance package and you're able to collect unemployment. And you know, in essence, you're making more money than what you were. And I could have kicked back and sat on the beach and been like, this is great. And, but I, I saw it as, a, as really that, that opportunity to, to allow me to pursue, you know, what many people dream about doing, just don't have that, you know, I guess that, that leap of faith or that jump. So I took it real serious and it was 
Um, I first actually, believe it or not, before diving full speed into the real estate itself, having a computer background, I wanted to provide a CRM system to other investors, you know, yeah. this before Podio even existed. So I was coding that till three, four in the morning, waking up. And well, let's just say I didn't have the proper training or whatever to like market that product. And then, you know, as time goes on, Podios and stuff came about, but you know, after let's just say three, four five months of kind of messing with that, but also touching with the, uh, the real estate, I found myself getting into short sales. Cause at that time in 2009, that's really when there was most houses were, you know, underwater. You at, yeah. When you were looking at these pre foreclosures, 99% didn't have equity at that point. They were all underwater. So you couldn't really ignore the short sales. I always felt like I was playing catch up because they were, you know, even back then and they were complex, you know, a lot of moving parts. You need all this documentation from the homeowners and all that stuff. And I felt like every time I would get a grasp of, you know, what's going on and, and get the, they would make some kind of change. Like, Oh, by the way, now you have to hold that house for three months, whatever it may be. But it was about a full year that I was working on these short sales before I landed my first deal one whole year. You know, some people do over three months, four months. And I remember going to bed and just saying, you know, like I invested money in some of these products at that time, it was uh, Nathan Jerwich's uh, short sale uh, riches, which was very detailed and one of the best products out there, to, you know, at the time. And, and whatnot. And I'm, I'm going, I'm falling asleep. And, and, you know, when people invest in these things, the reality is they don't want to be had, you know, you always hear they make it sound so easy and this and that, and then it gets sits on the shelf and no one does anything with it. And it's labeled as a scam. Well, you know, there's nothing you're going to buy that's a click, click it and it's going to generate money for you. You got to put in the work. So, you know, I'm going to bed each night and I'm like, I, I, I know it's possible because I'm living in the house that, you know, I bought that, that you know, so, but I'm like, I don't know, I'm putting in so much time and I, and I hope this is doable, but you know, I'm just stuck with it, stuck with it. And then, then I landed that next deal. And uh, just for reference, for those that follow me on Instagram and stuff, they'll see there was uh, bushes. We, didn't, we did the closing literally outside a, a uh, attorney office, signing documents on the bushes. And uh, anyway, so after a year of doing it, and finally getting my first deal or second deal, if you will, um, I was like, okay, this is, this is, this is what I'm doing. Like I'm committed, you know, and you know, from that point on, just a lot of different things I've dealt with, uh, buying non-performing notes, you know, I've done plenty of the wholesaling. Yeah. I did a lot of, you know, rehabs past two, three years, uh, became an accidental landlord. So, you know, it's, uh, it's, I, I love the aspect that it enables me to do what I want to do and provides a certain type of lifestyle. Uh, but it is challenging. You know, it's you, when you see what people put on Facebook and all that, they see what, you know, the results of the 10,000 hours or countless hours or whatever it may be to allow them to, 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 to buy those things or experience those experiences. So, yeah, I mean, you know, no one really sees the hard work and the non glamorous stuff and all the stuff that goes behind the scenes, but that in a nutshell is really how I kind of got into the real estate. You know, it's still, again, a, a fan of technology, obviously. And I'm finding when I start working on websites here and there, that I'm, I don't want to say becoming a dinosaur, but technology changes fast. You know, I do like that aspect because I can incorporate the technology part into the real estate. I feel like it gives me a little bit of an edge and, you know, helps make your life easier. I'm a big fan of automation. But with that being said, I'm also a very, I feel a very people person. I like to connect with people. I like to understand their scenario, like, you know, my, my business really is, it's called real estate solution providers. And, and I really put a lot of thought into that because it's not like a cookie cutter operation. You know, mm -hmm. we like to understand that what type of scenario is the homeowner going through and how can we provide a, a, a solution to, you know, for them. And a lot of times it's beyond just a cash offer on their house. I mean, the, the first house that I bought that I was living in, she was happy, you know, to get the money. She's like, this is great, but where am I going to go? You know, I have my kids. We don't want to be kicked out on the street. So what we did was we got them linked up with, it's actually Knowles Gardens in, in Parsippany. And I, I'm, I'll be honest with you, I'm surprised it actually happened. Luckily, I had a friend who somehow, you know, through whatever made things happen. But at the end of the day, you know, we got them in a nice place. Um, even went over there, me, my father, my brother, we were helping them load the trucks and and bring it on over to Noel's Gardens, unloaded it the whole nine. So it really went above and beyond. Here's money and, uh, you know, good luck. It's going that extra mile, understanding what's a true win for them. And I could tell you the, the ex-husband who was in Wisconsin, 
upon my first call to him, it was not so pleasant. Basically, he told me to go back off and go talk to the, you know. When the closing happened, he called me up and he goes, you know, listen, you and your mother, my mother works for an attorney, she handled the closing, goes, we're absolute angels. Because of you, my kids don't have to be on the street. And so not only did I get a house that, that you know, I like in an area and a good price and that, to, to hear that, it's just, I don't know, I mean, that, that's just so super rewarding. That just tells me, you know, I don't know. I, I guess it's not everyone treats it in such a fashion, but that, that's very rewarding for me. And so that I try to treat every homeowner the same. I mean, I could say one of the houses I bought um, a year ago, uh, we rehabbed it and I'm still friendly with the lady. I brought her over to show her what we did with it. And she was, you know, crying and stuff because it was just emotional for her. But you know, type of bit. That's just kind of how I am. I kind of, I really, I, I care is really what it comes down to. Yeah. I mean, so, wow. That, that was a lot to digest. <laughs> so I'll just kind of backtrack a little bit, Ryan. When you got started, it's really awesome that it coincidentally, it was a good timing for you that, you know, they were like, I guess, laying some people off and that you were able to speak to your boss to potentially get a, you know, decent enough se uh, severance package that paid you more to sure. be able to get that runway. I guess you could say to start. The other thing I like to say, and just mentioning it for the viewers, if they didn't catch that, is that you pretty much bet on yourself. You know, you'd have this little runway, either real estate's gonna work or, you know, it's not gonna work. It's funny That's you say that. You know, when I was going through that transition period, you know, I remember my father kind of mentioning like, hey, you know, don't lose sight of, of the computers. And listen, I get it. They, they, they paid for most of the college and here they're thinking like, you know, I graduated from NJIT not a bad school, you know, co computer science degree and thinking, uh oh, is my son going to go down this path of like, you know, a hobby per se, you know, and, and then his degree was for nothing. And, 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 and we know in the tech world, yeah, if you're out too long, you got a lot of schooling, you got these other guys that are coming up, it's you got to be, you got to stay sharp with it. So I get his concern, but you know, I was so convinced in my mind, I literally, you know, like 50 cents is get rich or die trying. Well, my, it was, it was no plan B. I, I actually got tired of hearing it, you know, about like, Hey, well, you know, don't lose sight of that. Whatever. I go, listen, I'm going to burn every F and bridge just so there's no plan B. I said, it's not, if I'm going to whatever, I'm like, you don't understand this. I'm going to find a way or I'm going to die trying to find that way. I'm not half-assing this. This is not a game for me. I know what I want to do. The proof is here. And that's just it. There was, there was no, there was no convincing me. Uh, and that, and I feel in order for people to succeed in this business, I feel you have to have a similar mindset. I agree. I, like, I, I know we don't really know each other, Ryan, but when I got started in real estate, yeah, my wife at the time, like held the consistent job, but then she wanted to divorce me. And at that point it was sink or swim. Luckily in the divorce, I was able to get the two family that we lived in and, mm -hmm. you know, like I didn't have to pay rent, but everything else, you know, I had to figure out. Like I lived off credit cards for like my first year. Wow. So. Menu, man. Yeah. And people don't understand like, and listen, it doesn't mean that, you know, that it has to be that way. I mean, listen, some guys are happy with their nine to five job and doing a deal once a year and that's cool. But if, if people really want to go ahead and say, I want to do this for a living full time, that's the commitment you need. And, and I'll even say further that, you know, there's countless nights that, I mean, I don't really watch much TV now, but I remember we were paying for like, uh, uh, what was it, uh, Opt Online. And, and, I, and I, I didn't, it was just sitting on the shelf for months because I was just so dedicated to what I was doing that that wasn't fun for me. This is my pure focus day in and day out, you know, giving up weekends, evening, like people don't understand that nine to five, you might be working at whatever, but my day started at five o'clock till, till night, like those hours and weekends and shit. I, I was knocking on doors. I was still in my twenties, like hung over, you know, like whatever. But like, I was just putting in nonstop hours and I really feel like you need that, that type of dedication to, and put it all in all or nothing. If you really want to succeed. Now, again, that doesn't mean you can't be happy to do a one onesie twosie here and there. But to really do this on a consistent basis, you know, it's, I mean, it's, I'm always, I don't know about you guys, but it's on my mind constantly of how to, and then not just about business, because it's all 360, right? Like physical, spiritual, uh, but you know, it all interrelates. But 
I'm always thinking of how to improve and how to tweak this. And, you know, my, that's my mind. That, that's just what it's focusing on. And that's, and if, and if it's kind of, if it feels like work to you, like that's what I try to tell people. Like I love surfing. That's one of my favorite sports. And I explain to my younger brothers equally into the surfing. And I'm like, you don't get it. I'm like, it's, it, yeah, it's work, but I'm like, it's like a, a fine, it's a great, a fine line there between like work and fun. Like to me, as much as I'm busting my ass doing, I, I enjoy every aspect of it. Hey, you're getting recorded. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Hey. I got hundreds of visitors are going to say hi. 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 But yeah, so, I mean, that is the other thing. Like, I do find a lot of enjoyment, you know, in what I do. Definitely. I, I get it. Because, again, kind of like you were mentioning with homeowners, like, you're helping a homeowner out of a tough situation. And, you know, it's aside from just buying the property. Like, my first deal, the I had to, because, like, she lost her job, didn't have anywhere else to really go. Like, I helped her apply with TRA. I helped her find a place. Then I had to help her. Then I helped her move and everything. Because regardless, she was going to lose the house. So it's like, okay, well, this is everything I could do, you know? That's awesome. And, and, and like if, if anyone reads like the reviews that, you know, that are for my company, I mean, they're along those lines because I feel like we go the extra mile. It's not just about the transaction. You know, like I, I was actually a listing agent on one of the properties we just had, and I still keep in touch. I, I don't, I think it's, you have to be true, right? You know, you have to be genuine yeah. about it, obviously. But if you do give a rat's ass about these homeowners, like just listen to them, like actually provide a solution. They'll tell you, you know, how to best serve them. So I, I, I can tell you when I was first getting into this business, uh, you know, you, you're inundated with subject twos, lease options, wholesaling, landlord, and your head's going to explode, right? You think you got to master all these. <laughs> But you come to the homeowner and you're like, well, we can do a subject to and this, this, and that, or we can do a lease option. Their head is spinning versus, hey, you know, tell me about your situation. Let's put our heads together and let's figure out a win-win. Now, listen, there's definitely situations where a cash cart, listen, hey, here's what's going on. I just need that. You know, it's a money thing. Okay, I got it. But a lot of times it's beyond that, you know, especially if you're dealing with people in foreclosures, you know, yeah. they didn't just decide to not pay their, 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 their mortgage. They could have fallen behind on, you know, um, taxes as well. They could have got divorced. Um, it's just a slew of things. Lost their job the whole nine. So I always try to come in and say, I'm not just going to buy your house, but like my job, my responsibility, I feel, is to really impact their life, you know, to say, hey, Ryan didn't just buy my house. Ryan, you know, made this the smoothest transaction ever. He, he got us over here where we never would have made, you know, had a chance of living in this area. And oh, by the way, he came, we didn't have to, you know, and helped us, you know, unload this and bring it to wherever, or, you know, I, this place wouldn't allow pets, but he made this happen, whatever it may be. I mean, a true solution provider. Extra, extra mile recently for a property in Belleville. He, you know, he's a wholesaler. He has it under contract. There was an illegal tenant in the basement. Like, you know, it was an illegal apartment. The lady couldn't afford really anything. He found, and she wanted to move to Rhode Island. She, or I mean, he literally found a moving company that would help her move all her stuff because she was alone with a baby right. like so the 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 moving company you know picked her up drove her to rhode island you know and then moved all her stuff into her new place and everything right. Right. and you know she and he texts her back and forth even to this day granted it was only about a month ago but still he taught he still texts her to make sure she's okay yeah and, and you know that's i appreciate that kind of stuff man because it tells you you're just you're beyond you know it's not just about the money you know, and that, and that, that tells a lot about their character. Yeah. That you're an actual person, you know, it is not, yeah, it's exactly. not just Ryan. Uh, what are you doing differently today as compared to, you know, like when you first kind of got started, is there a certain type of strategy that you employ more than, you know, back then? Um, well, interestingly enough, you know, when I first started off, it was the wholesaling aspect and did that for a while. And then I was a, private money lender sort of uh, for a rehab deal. And then I started doing rehabs, but I was more of, you know, the office guy who was getting the, the prospects and then I'd meet my partner. We would screen the GCs and then he'd be managing it and I would look for more deals. Then that changed, you know, as I did a couple of those, became an accidental landlord, started, you know, accumulating some single families and then kind of delved into rehabs myself in my own local area. And, you know, so the past three years I was in the field, at least swinging the hammer, which you shouldn't do, but 
that's a, that's another show. But so and then now a little bit of I guess landlording, wholesaling, and and rehabbing. Given the current scenario, I'm very very particular on the the rehabs I'm taking on, and I have a few single families. And, I, and I've told many times, I'm like, no more single families, no more single families. And then every time I say that, something pops up where I'm like, ah, that's one I may want to hold on to. But, you know, <laughs> mo- the reality, right now what I'm trying to do is kind of transition to more of the multis for better cash flow. But to answer your question as far as what I'm doing differently, I'm actually focusing more on trying to build the business itself. When we're getting started, you know, you're a solopreneur, funds typically are limited, and you're doing all this, pretty much everything yourself, right? Gail, you realize that's only doable for so long and it's limiting. So right now I'm really starting to build the team, starting to pull myself out of certain tasks that I still get sucked in from time to time. Just my nature, I got to break those habits. But to, to basically say from, you know, we'll call it a high paying job per se to an actual business owner. My goals are to have my business, you know, the, the everyday task handled by the team and I could go do, you know, the higher level stuff. Like I love going to these masterminds and these networking events and, um, you know, just, just building your team and, 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 and surrounding yourself by like, like-minded people. So to me, you know, that I, listen, I'd rather be swinging a golf club and swinging a hammer. Um, and actually not that I play golf. I played for the first time like three weeks ago, but uh, we're going to have to, we're going to have to get in there more because it was fun. Pleasantly surprised. I had a blast. So. That's, that's the biggest focus is, is, you know, building out that part, um, definitely trying to get more involved with the social media aspect and, and, and building, you know, relationships that way. But actually to, to relay, speaking of relationships, I could say that's probably been the main focus. Once COVID hit, everything changed, right? It, you know, it was almost as if the real estate market crashed overnight, which you never hear about. And, it, and I remember talking to other partners and buyers and they were, hey, we're not buying, or we're buying at like 20% off the top of what we were doing before. And it was like, wow, like, okay. So, you know, the dynamic changed. And basically, it was just at that time, let's focus on the relationships. Let's build those. And, and that's, that's done me rather well. And I think that's a big part of this, right? It's a people business. You know, there's um, people probably in your network that you're probably not leveraging. And, and, and likewise, you know. I have my email list where I always kind of reach out to say, listen, your network is really very, very powerful and very important. Now, I'm sure you guys have problems in your business as if I have problems in my business. Well, if we have that type of relationship, but we can figure it out, we can grow together and we could, you know, accomplish more at a, at a, at a, at a faster pace. Absolutely. Absolutely. Is there any books or podcasts that you recommend to you know, our audience here? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, and there's probably a ton I could, you know, I, I just had an ebook I released. Just one or two. Yeah. Yeah. It's free by the way. It has a, has a list of those, but I mean, I mentioned in the beginning, rich dad, poor dad, I'm sure most people have heard that if they haven't, that's like a, I don't know. The, most people might have transitioned to real estate because of that book. And that's a big eye opener as far as being financially intelligent. So that I would put that probably at the top of the list. Um, then you have the E-Myth. Um, and now they have other uh, revisions of that, uh, one specifically to real estate. But that really changed my mind as far as working on your business versus in your business. So as I just mentioned, that's kind of where my focus is right now, putting the right team in place so I can free up my time. So you know that's, that's probably the next step. So, and then another more advanced book, I guess, when you have your team building will be Traction by Gino Wickman. That's a good one. And then Ultimately, my, my mentor, Mark Evans, his content in his books is, is exceptional. Interestingly enough, I'm sure it's most books, but I feel like especially with his and even some of his posts and stuff, we may easily dismiss some things that were said or written as something very, very basic to later on to be like, wow, that was actually very powerful. That went over my head because I wasn't ready for it at the mm-hmm. time. But uh, those are good books. And you know, I, I could give a full list to you guys, but off the top of my head, definitely, definitely those. Nice. Yeah, no, awesome. those, those are some great books. I've read the first three, you know, Traction. Obviously, you know, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, that's like the Bible of real estate, right? <laughs> Anyone that ever gets into real estate, that's sure. either the first or first few books you read. Yeah. You know, so yeah. 
And then there's the uh, e myth, uh, the e myth of real estate investor. That's uh, I think that's the one you're referring to. But there's both. You know, there, there's the, yeah. the regular e myth, just a general business, and then the e myth yeah. real estate investor. Yeah. I've listened, I've, I've read both e myth, and you know, generally speaking, teaches you putting in systems, working on your business, and then the real estate version, which is just more specific. And I think it's Dan Merrill, I think, co, co wrote that, yes. or whatever. Yeah. No. Dan Merrill and Paul, Paul Isaijin or something. His name. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And now there's a couple books. Um. Um. You know, for example, Banker's Code. I just. Oh yeah, that's good. That book. That that's an eye opener in itself. Uh, what else? Some of Dan Kenny's stuff is what I'm listening to now. That's more marketing. Oh man, there's a slew of them. Uh, there's a. I mean, I got probably 60 myself that I still have to get through. Yeah, I get it. Trust me. I like on my Audible. I have like 20 books that I need to l- listen through. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I drove to Ohio, like I said, three weeks ago, a month ago, and, you know, six hours. So I was like, perfect. I don't always get to and just, just rip through, you know, and it's, that's, I call, I guess what I say, mobile EDU. And I, and I, I love it. I don't really listen to that much music when I'm driving now. It's just, just putting, you know, I guess it's explained that your mind's a garden, right? You want to yeah. fill weeds, or you want to plant it with good seeds and all this basic stuff. It sounds like, but it's so true. It, it, it really is. And I'm a big Sometimes. Fan. Yeah, like like you were saying, sometimes one thing you miss it, but then you re read or re listen to the same book and it's like the most profound like thing you've ever heard and now you have to yeah. implement it. Oh absolutely. I, I've listened to Rich Dad Poor Dad at least three times. Yeah, it's a three and a half hour one. And I, I'd still listen to it again, uh, and, and get some new nuggets and it and it just it's a very it's well put together. It's an easy listen. It's not boring and and actually think and grow rich. I just recently uh, I read it and then I listened to the audio book. That's another good one. But yeah, I mean, just to constantly feed yourself with good information, you know, mm-hmm. it's imperative. You know, I'm, a, I'm more of a student now than when I was a, a student in school. You know, like I make the joke, you know, like short circuit when he's like input. Brrr. Like I just want to download as much of this in my brain as I can. Yeah. Another question. What is the best piece of advice you would give a newer real estate investor who's just trying to get started. So this is, this is interesting. Um, you know, I could say the, the, one of the biggest realizations for me is investing in yourself. Right. And that sounds maybe cliche now, but, uh, I'm part of a very expensive mastermind. And the reality is, is that you really have to like you, when you're investing in your own education, you're never going to lose. Right. I mean, I kind of look at the analogy in a sense, like, Let's just say if you're going to get, you know, a brain surgeon or something, if you want the brain surgeon that just went to the county so-so school or the top-notch school in the country or world for that matter, who are you going to take more serious? Who do you want, you know, to be working on you? And I kind of look at that at myself, you know, I'm dealing with investors loaning hundreds of thousands of dollars. I, if I was on the flip side loaning somebody, I, I could appreciate that somebody's willing to invest that much in themselves that tells me that they're taking themselves and my money and everything very serious. So really is, is investing in yourself, constantly feed yourself good information, you know, audio books, whatever it may be, surround yourself with the right people. And, and, and I get it. It's a challenge that, you know, when people are starting off, you know, funds may be limited, but also you have some gurus, whatever, have a bad rap in the sense where no one wants to get taken advantage of and they feel it's a scam. Because look, at the end of the day, you know, the products that are being sold, they have, they, it, it, the pitches work, right? But people feel that they're going to buy this product and then it's going to make them a ton of money. The reality is the work has to be done. So if you're willing to do the work, right, you will be, and you're consistent with it, you will be successful. So in which case I feel that, you know, there is no magic bullet out there. I hate to break it to everyone. I know that certain you know there's certain little strategies here and there but at the end of the day you really just have to continue to educate yourself continue continuously uh invest in yourself and um you know again surround yourself with with the with the right people i I feel that you'll never lose when you invest in yourself i mean listen i I guess if if you're a person like you know you went to college and you paid twenty thirty thousand dollars and thought it was a vacation and dropped out well you, you actually have to do something with the information that you're you're getting but I mean, I can tell you that I had the, you know, when starting off a little bit of the mentality, like, you know, funds are here and you don't want to get taken advantage of. So you're looking for all the free, you know, options and all that. And that will only get you so far. It's actually been said, the, re- the reason why there's, it is as expensive as it is for certain amount of, for these certain groups, 
it's not, it's really to keep other people out. It's about to elevate those who are willing to invest that. And you'd be amazed at the type that, what, what you get out of such a group. I mean, let's be honest, when you offer things for free, unfortunately, it's just not valued as much. The perception's not there. I, I early in my, you know, transition to real estate, you know, I had people that asked me for help and I was like, okay, I'll, I'll mentor you for free. You know, I just thinking, you know what? It, it, I, I didn't view them as like a student teacher kind of relationship, you know, figured that they could be partners. Let's, let's work together. I, I was in a scenario where I was trying to motivate them like, Hey, what's going on? That's not how it should be. So when I actually continued that a little bit, when you put like a price tag on it, that entry fee, it basically eliminates those who are going to take it serious and those who are not. So, yeah, I, I think you have to be sort of self-motivated, right? So if somebody's coming in and they want you to teach them and they're not self-motivated, there's no hope, you know, but at exactly. least in my, in my eyes, yeah. you know. Like, Yo, sure. If, if someone thinks that like, hey, I'm going to try this for a week or maybe a month and, you know, and then they, and most of them give up after they, they want that immediate gratification. Yeah. I told you my story before it was a year. Imagine a whole year of going until you land that deal. I mean, you have to be consistent. You have to be convinced and you just got to stick with it. And I'm sure that's probably with any business, but you know, at the end of the day, you do need that, that mentality, that mindset. And, you know, I get, as far as, I'm sorry, you, I, I lost my train a little bit because you were saying that, that if they have to be committed, right? Yes. So yeah. motivated. Uh, right. So, I mean, I, I have people approaching me all the time. I think you got to come from a perspective of if let's say you're asking for help for that someone, not like, Hey, looking to get something and extract it like a vampire, just looking to, you want to come to those people with like value, right? So like if I had to start over again, and actually I, I kind of did this. I remember when I was a member of GS Re and I didn't know how to do short sales. I'm like, hey, I'm knocking on doors and I have prospects that want to move forward, but I don't know what to do. So like, I'll, let's partner, I'll split it, whatever. That's to me coming with them in value. So like, if someone wants to learn this stuff, find out the, whoever you want to emulate, learn from whatever. If you don't have that money to hire them as a coach or whatever, see how you could provide them value. I'll, I'll give you a quick example. I had a gentleman approach me and I get approached all the time, probably just as you guys. Mm -hmm. And hey, I want to learn this business and whatnot. And so I said, okay, you know, so anyway, I, right before this call, I hopped off with him. He's taking action. He's not asking for a handout. He's like, look, I'm finding deals. I want to provide them to you, but I want to learn as we go. Okay, cool. So it's been a week or two so far. It seems promising. We'll see what happens, but he's coming with value. He's not asking for a free ride and he's actually doing, taking action. There's nothing worse than somebody who approaches and they take action for a day or two and then they fall off. I don't, I don't have time for that. I just don't have the patience. Yeah. But if somebody's really trying to, to make this, listen, I'll even spend my time and, you know, and it's, I'll give you my left arm. Let's make it happen. I, I can appreciate that. And I know what it's like to, when you're starting out. Mm -hmm. So bring value. And, you know, I think in a scenario like that, people will take notice. And I think, I, I think it's a mutually beneficial relationship. It has to. I, I, and it's funny. I'm sure you guys hear this as well. The worst word you probably could hear is, hey, I just want to pick your brain. Or I want to take you out to lunch and pick your brain. That just means you just want to suck all this information out of me for a cup of coffee or some BS. That's the wrong approach, right? Like, if you, to me, that just doesn't, that's not a win-win. You're not coming with, uh, you know, a, a, a position of, of I want to provide value and make it mutually beneficial, you know? So. Yeah, no, like, uh, it's funny. I know nowadays like e even with funding, whenever I, you know, like raise funding for a project or something, I remember at the beginning, you know, I'd be more than open to give equity for someone just bringing the funding. But, you know, at this point, it it's kind of almost thrown at you. And like, if someone's still trying to get equity out of a deal, you know, for a deal for them to do absolutely nothing and to learn, yeah. then, you know, it's really not worth it. Cause you're going to ask me a million questions and then the way that you're, you know, you're thinking of it down the road, you're probably going to want more or something. See, that's a funny point. And, and it's interesting, right? Because when you're first getting into this business, what's one important part is negotiating, right? And, and negotiating is the best paying job in the world. I could ask 
you know, whoever, hey, will you take X? Like, you know, let's just say it's $5,000 discount. And they say, okay, yeah, that'll work. It took you two seconds to ask that and you just made five grand, right? Now, the problem is, unfortunately, I feel like that kind of carries over, especially the newer investors where they're trying to squeeze every little bit out of every particular deal and it's very short-sighted, right? You know, so, you know, I feel like if they have the short-term vision and they're only going to do one deal, that's, that's, that's not good for anybody. So like, you know, I, have, I always focus on long-term. You know, I'm working with uh, one guy right now who literally I, my, my list is probably upset because they haven't seen much deals because he's scooping everything up. Now, listen, I probably can get more money for some of these properties and, you know, maybe on others, but it, it balances out. I have long-term vision. He has long-term vision. We're not in it for the one deal. Some he's going to do excellent, some not so good and vice versa. But at the end of the day, over the long period, we're both benefiting, you know? So mm -hmm. to me, I think it's better for people when they're, they're learning to understand and to realize that it's not all about that one single deal. It's about the relationships because I mean, I'll give you an example. If all of a sudden I do a wholesale deal and that guy doesn't make any money or God forbid loses money, you think he's going to buy from me again? That's not good. That, and oh, some no, guys, yeah. Right. I mean, if it's of no fault of, of, of his, if I inflated the numbers, which apparently a lot of wholesalers are doing, which is, again, that's a whole nother show. But, you know, you have to, you know, do what's right. You know, you treat your, 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 your partners with money as if it's your own. And, um, you know, just have a, a, like I said, a long-term vision. And I think that'll behoove you better than just the short-sightedness. It, it, it never never made sense to me if someone screwed me over for like $500. I'm like, that $500 just cost us our relationship, you know? And, and I could say when I, when I used to deal with like bird dogs and stuff like that, um, they would say, Ryan, you know, how, what makes you say, you know, what, what, what am I guaranteed that I'm going to, you know, get paid? And I said, okay, well, there's a number of ways. One is you could see from the tax or county clerk records, if I bought the deal, I said, um, you know, I said, well, I said that aside, and there's a, there's a few other ways, but I go, that aside, I go, just from a business perspective, I said, number one, it's a tight knit community. Do you think that I would sacrifice my, my, my name and my reputation for 500 or even $5,000 for that matter? I said, and not only that, how stupid, if you gave me a deal and I made 10 or 15 or whatever it may be, why would I screw you over for 500 bucks? Why would you bite the hand that feeds you? It's the dumbest thing ever. It just makes zero sense to me. Yeah. So I don't, but you'd be amazed. There's some people out there that don't share that mindset, but you know, they, they don't stay in your network very long. And uh, you know, that's yeah. just the, nature of the business. Definitely. So Ryan, um, how can people get in touch with you on uh, social media? On let's say Facebook, are you on Instagram? Yeah. Uh, yeah. What other platform are you on? Awesome. So um, I think I'm on most of, so on Facebook, they can, you know, Ryan buys houses. They can look me up there. I have that kind of linked up some of the stuff that comes from Instagram. Uh, Instagram, my name is R E S P N J. So it's real estate solution providers, but R E S P N J Facebook, as you're aware, we have R E I unite. So that's when we do similar videos like this. And really the goal for that is similar to what you guys are doing. We want to go ahead and train people out there. So, Hey, listen, if I'm dealing with a wholesaler, that's uh, you know bringing me deals. Well, if they just give me an address and a little bit of information, and I go ahead and I spend my time, and it turns out to be a dead deal. Well, it's a waste of time. But if I could train them so that they come and they they're educated that when they provide a deal, it's here's solid comps, here's photos, here's all this. Well, again, that's a mutually beneficial situation. They're getting knowledge, they're getting taught, and in turn we're creating a, a, a relationship which is more efficient. So you know, that's the goal is to really try to educate people out there and to, to just have good business practices. You know, there's nothing worse than, you know, and I'm sure you've guys seen it where maybe they're trying to wholesale your, your own deal and they mark it up $5,000 <laughs> or, you know, someone, someone unfortunately has no, no agreement with the, the you know, or, or no uh, interest in the property and they just throw it out to their buyers and, you know, illegally, it yeah, just, the it's just bad for the business as a whole. So I feel, I don't look at it like if I educate and I share that you're my, my competition. I do view it as co-op, co as they call it. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of times where 
um, you know, maybe I got a deal and, and the other guy didn't, but we've partnered on some. And again, if you have that type of mindset where, hey, listen, there's, there's, there's no shortage. There's, it's not a scarcity mindset. There's no shortage of properties and everything else. Some I'll win, some I won't. But hey, how do we collectively elevate together? And that's really the, uh, that's really the goal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, awesome. we have, sorry, we have, and then if they want to email me, it's ryan at ryanpal.com. So that's R-Y-A-N at R-Y-A-N, P as in Paul, A as in Apple, L as in Larry.com. And actually, last but not least, they, I forgot, we, we just recently did this. If they go to REI Unite, R-E-I-U-N-I-T-E.com, you can see there's some stuff there. It has a link to uh, my YouTube videos, which I have a little fun. It's called The Rye Show. So I try to incorporate a little bit of the real estate and some fun, goofy stuff. There's a link there for the free ebook that I hope, you know, hopefully people will download and give me some feedback. I'd love it. I'm creating some other ones. I'm in the process now. And that's exactly what, um, you know, the purpose is, is to better educate people. There's software uh, listed in their applications and also uh, books that are recommended. So I would love it if people actually got back to me and gave me some feedback. That way I could say, okay, you know, most people could use a little help here and then I could gear the next future publications to better serve them. Yeah, we we definitely have to look into that ourselves, you know, um, and check it out too. Please do, yeah. And and if you guys start, you know, I'm more than happy to help any way I can. Thank you so much, Ryan, for being on the show. Uh, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. It's newbierei. YouTube.com slash c slash newbierei. So, Ryan, thank you once again for being on our show. Really informative. Have a great one, guys.